Let's derive the Helmholtz equation, which is a special form of Maxwell's equations in uniform media. So our starting point will be Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain, as we calculated in last video. So that's the curl of the electric field being proportional to the time derivative of the magnetic field. So time derivative is multiplication by j omega in the phasor domain. So that's the first equation. And then for the second equation, we have curl of h, j omega, epsilon of r, e of r. Okay, so here we have two equations, two unknowns. That's a little bit unwieldy. Let's see if we can turn this into a single equation for a single unknown. And let's focus on the uh, electric field. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video and try to achieve that by taking the curl of the first equation and then trying to make use of the second equation. And feel free to assume that mu is a constant so that we're just working in boring non-magnetic uh, media. So pause the video and try and derive a single equation for the electric field. So let's take the curl of the first equation. That's going to give us the curl of the curl of the electric field. And then we have the curl of the right hand side. And since we said that mu is a constant, we can just write minus j omega mu. So bringing out the mu from under the curl. And then in the right hand side, we have the curl of the magnetic field. Luckily, we do know what the curl of the magnetic field is. Yeah, it's, it's right here in the second equation. So we can write that this is minus j omega mu. And then for the second equation, we have j omega epsilon r e of r, which then gives us omega squared mu epsilon e of r. Okay, mission achieved. We have a single equation with a single unknown, but let's see if we can simplify this a bit further. And the way we're going to do that is making use of a well-known or not so well-known vector identity that the curl of the curl of a certain vector field can be written as the gradient of the divergence of that field minus the Laplacian of E. Um, so the question is, can you now try and make use of this equation to simplify that equation? Also making use of some more physics, so some more of Maxwell's equations. And again, you're free to assume here that epsilon will be uniform. And you're also free to assume that there's no sources in our problem so that any charge density rho is just equal to zero. So pause the video and see if, based on these assumptions, you can further simplify the equation. So there's more to Maxwell than just the curl equations that we've been using so far. There's also divergence equations. There's also an equation that says that the divergence of the dielectric displacement is the charge density rho. Now, d of course is epsilon e and if rho is equal to zero then the right hand side is zero and if we say that e is a constant if it does not vary as a function of r then we can just bring it outside of the divergence which is just a differential operator and under these conditions we can conclude that the divergence of the electric field is zero and if the divergence of the electric field is zero. That means that in, in this equation over here, we can just drop that term here and we're only left with minus the Laplacian. So now we can say that if we have, that we have minus uh, the Laplacian of the electric field is equal to omega squared mu epsilon, which is now a constant in our case times E. And then after some very complicated further manipulations, you can write down that the Laplacian of E plus omega squared mu epsilon E is equal to zero. And this is the Helmholtz equation, uh, in this case expressed for the vectorial electric field.
People often write omega squared mu epsilon as k squared, propagation constant squared, where by definition k is then equal to omega square root of mu epsilon. Okay. If you want, you can also factor out the contribution from, uh, from the vacuum, and then you can write that uh, k is omega, and then mu epsilon, uh, you want to factor that as mu zero epsilon zero, so the vacuum contribution, and then times the relative permittivity and permeability mu r epsilon r. So this is another way of, uh, of writing this. And then you can combine this thing as k naught, the wave factor in vacuum, and this thing here as the refractive index. And so the refractive index is then just um, the square root of mu r um, epsilon r, which is basically epsilon mu divided by their vacuum uh, counterparts. Okay, um, this is just some notational thing to introduce the wave vector here, but the important part is that we have our vectorial Helmholtz equation for the electric field. Now you can easily show in an exercise that you can also end up with the similar equation, but then for the magnetic field. And that also means that basically each Cartesian component of either E or H will satisfy a scalar version of the Helmholtz equation. Because the Laplacian of a vector is basically another vector consisting of the Laplacian of each of the different uh, Cartesian components of that, uh, that vector. So we can also write down a scalar version of that equation. That's the Laplacian of a scalar function psi plus k squared psi of r is equal to zero, where again psi is just any Cartesian component of the electric or the uh, magnetic field. Now, important to realize is that this only holds when we have uniform media. Um, let's relax that requirement slightly by saying we don't have a single uniform medium in all of space, but we have a medium which consists of basically piecewise constant varying uh, refractive indices. So something like, uh, like this. What will then happen is that this equation will hold in any of these domains separately. Now purely formally, in this case, for stepwise constant refractive index profiles, we can bring back the spatial uh, dependence of k, and we can write down something that the Laplacian of psi of r plus k squared of r psi of r is equal to zero. Um, but with the caveat here that what we mean by this is just a piecewise constant variation of the refractive index. So this is purely formal notation here, not just an arbitrary dependence of k on r, but piecewise constant. Now this means that you can solve the Helmholtz equation in each of these different sub-regions of space, and then obviously you still need to glue them together at some point, and that's typically done by going back to the vectorial nature of the problem and then invoking continuity conditions across boundaries. As you know, for example, that the tangential part, the tangential part of the electric field is continuous and stuff like that. Uh, but that's not really the topic of, uh, of this video over here. But the important part is that we've derived the Helmholtz equation, um, vectorial version and scalar version. And fundamentally, that's only valid if you're dealing with media where the refractive index is constant.